Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-70. The previous episode revealed that Karina the Waif had not died in the swollen stream, but had been rescued by her pet Axebeak, Peepers. Fortunately for Fargus the Human Ranger, the pair found him as he searched for clues. A straight lightning bolt had severed a tree limb and nearly caused the large man to drown when it pinned him underneath the heavy branch. With the party reunited back at the tent, a guard watch was set and the group rested after an exhausting and wet day. We rejoin them as the storm clouds have lifted and the sun blankets the valley in light. The group stretched out and remarked that it was some of the best sleep they'd had since Colby. Fargus and Karina were still sore despite magical aid given by Sister Elaine. A hearty breakfast of jackrabbit was obtained, courtesy of Cabe Silvertongue, and the group felt ready to resume their journey. The clear day allowed the entire party to catch wisps of smoke against the mountains and opted to head that way. As they broke camp, Karina pondered her mode of transportation. Bulger offered space on his smaller horse, but Peepers wouldn't hear of it. The constant nudging to his mistress finally got the point across and conceded that Peepers could carry her until she found another way around. The party moved swiftly across the open plains and made good time in their journey. Around midday, the group reached the foothills and noted multiple buildings and tents present, confirming that the smoke was from a mining camp and not from more orcs. Relieved, the Delvers entered the camp and found supporting staff present while the rest of the community was in the mines working. The commoners took great interest in the beautiful lady riding the exotic creature and were both shocked and scared of the situation. Sister Elaine and Fargus gave their word that Peepers would be on his best behavior and that the party was just a group of peaceful adventurers. The group was fed for no cost by the camp just as the miners were exiting the mountain. Bulger inquired as to the break and pointed out that most miners he knew worked from sunup to sundown. Tyra, a seamstress initially by trade, pointed out that she was a company mine and the owner, Geldor Lucky Strike, was a good boss. She did an impression of the older gnome, saying, Fed worker is a good worker, and no complaints in the belly mean no complaints. She laughed at the rendition, as did a few other ladies until the miners approached. A squat, muscular gnome led the workers up to the tables where the food was and proclaimed, Eat up, my miners, because a fed worker is a good worker. The tone had been mimicked perfectly by Tyra, and the party burst out in laughter, causing the foreman owner to look at them. Something funny? he inquired. Lady Arena stepped forward and pointed out that she had just been told a joke as they were arriving. She introduced the members of the group, and the stout individual pointed out that he was Geldor owner of the mine and offered them a seat at his table. He inquired about his travels as the other miners ate, but listened intently. Once Geldor found out they were just passing through, he offered them a tent for the night and a big meal in the evening if they stayed, and told tales of what they had seen. We don't get much information around here, and this motley group, well, they love a good yarn. Cabe broke out a huge smile across his face when the opportunity to perform presented itself. Fargus began to hedge on the offer, but the half-elven bard jumped up from his seat and exclaimed that they were in for the performance of a lifetime tonight. The relish in which he sold the act impressed his associates and brought broad smiles and cheers from the dirty miners. Geldor pounded the table and announced that a deal had been struck. Time's a wasting, folks. Let's get back to digging so our show comes that much sooner. The miners cheered again and began to file off towards the opening in the mountain. The party members looked at each other and then at Cabe and pointed out that his tale telling better be as good as the group of miners thought it would be because they looked rough. Tyra leaned in and pointed out, you don't know the half of it, as she cleaned the table. Cabe asked what she meant by that remark and the woman scoffed loudly. 
She set down the plates and several associates gathered around her. You should probably know that the miners will expect to be entertained and not be given some half-assed tale of crap. The last performer that tried to breeze their way through a show had his teeth knocked out. The Delvers were taken aback at the woman's frankness, but the look on her face was a clear indication that she was not kidding. Sister Elaine clapped the bard on the back and chuckled. You'd best start preparing your best material. Better than what you had in Phoenix. Cabe appeared to be somewhat shaken as the rest of the group began to help Tyra and the others clean up from the meal. Karina stepped up and gave Cabe a playful elbow to the ribs. I think you'll do fine. All you have to do is tell them what we have gone through. Use your flowery words and they'll be eating out of your hand. She walked off and Cabe turned to the other side where a nonplussed peeper stood. What are you looking at? He demanded of the beast. Peepers, as if on cue, violently shook his head left to right and strutted off towards Karina. Crap! exclaimed Cabe as he fished around for some paper and the old journal he had recovered in the dungeon. He sat down and quickly began to sketch out an outline of their trials and tribulations as the group set up the adventurer's tent in an open area. Later that night, several large fires were set on either side of a makeshift stage where the bard would give his recitation. Once everyone is assembled, Geldor got up and thanked his employees for their hard work. I know I don't say it often enough, but I appreciate each and every one of you. With this site getting a bit dry, we'll probably head out next week and make a new camp. After we hit town. His addition caused the ensemble to roar loudly in approval as it seemed the group had been out on the frontier for a while. Now, without further ado, I give you... Um... Give you... Cabe Silvertongue, interjected the bard. Cabe Silvertongue! The miners politely clapped as the half-elf got to stage and introduced himself as well as the rest of the party. While his performance started out sluggish, the details of the escape from Phoenix snapped the miners' attention in place. The explosion of the ship, the Green Sash Gang, Cornwall's capture, and all the other encounters leading up to this moment had captured the miners' attention as the bard spun a wonderful tale of the party's accomplishments. At one point, the group members remarked about the sheer volume that they had accomplished and bowed graciously at the applause given at the conclusion of the various vignettes. As Cabe finished up, and that is how we came to meet you, our newest friends. And he took a bow. The crowd erupted in applause and accolades and began to chant, Cabe, 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 as several of the miners hoisted him up on their shoulders and carried him around the venue, garnering him more than multiple handshakes and a few small jumpstones. Once back on stage, the half-elf was released and the mine owner came up and gave him a large hug, slipping him a bag of garnets, proclaiming his thanks to the heroes of Fartook. Individual miners each came up and thanked Cabe for their fine account, and Geldor realized how late it was. Everyone, everyone, your attention please. Our fine bard has retold too many stories and the hour is late. I say, we break out the ale and all take a day off of work tomorrow. What do you say? The crowd roared their approval and several casks were brought out. Fargus and Bulger both grinned brightly before jumping in with the miners and Lady Irena shook her head. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.